Oh, we use the uh, extreme fish food quite a bit in our shop. Uh, we like it very much. Uh, it's very palatable for the fish. We uh, a lot of times fish that don't eat other things will eat the pellets, which is a great thing. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and welcome to part three as we move along and add some automation to my 120 reef. Just very quickly in part one I showed you what a disaster my reef had become because my sump was too large, it took up all the space in my stand, I didn't have any room for automation. In addition to that the plumbing was done in such a way that it made the tank very difficult to work on even to do basic maintenance daily, weekly, monthly, whatever so I wound up not doing it and yada 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 uh, the reef started to go to pot. In part two I showed you how I added a smaller sump from zero edge which provided me some more space in the bottom of my aquarium and underneath my stand so now I have some room to add automation. I showed you how we used silicone tubing which in my mind is a godsend to reefing. It's flexible but it is also um, not the stiff kind of flexible tubing that you're maybe used to from buying at the big box store and it allows you to do so much more so silicone tubing has been a big uh, a big upgrade for this aquarium and then also uh, a new aquascape up in the tank with not as much live rock I took out about 25 pounds of live rock in fact I think in the future I'll be doing a fin cast on how much live rock do you really need anymore and is the old rule about at least a pound to two pounds of live rock per gallon still valid I'll just give you a clue. I don't think it is, but that's something for the future. In the meantime, so today in part three, I want to show you how to do vodka dosing. Vodka dosing literally is nothing more than adding literally vodka to your aquarium. It doesn't matter if it's good vodka or bad vodka. In fact, the cheapest vodka you can, you can find out there is probably the best that you can buy. And what you're really doing is adding a carbon source to your aquarium. And that carbon source is going to promote the growth of beneficial bacteria, which will break down more waste and make it more bioavailable to your protein skimmer, which will make your protein skimmer more effective, ultimately removing more organics from your aquarium and giving you clearer water and making your fish and corals happier. So what you're actually doing by increasing that beneficial bacteria is reducing the amount of nitrates and phosphates in the water, and that will ultimately make your corals happier, healthier, faster growing, and more colorful. Once again, in my aquarium, I want to move toward automation because I'm not the type of person that remembers or even has the time every day to go out and dose five mils or whatever it is of vodka into my aquarium. And consistency is key. So once again, with the smaller sump, now my stand has space for me to add some automation. So let's take a look with my son, Ben Carlin of Carlin Aquarium Systems at the process for adding a dosing pump with vodka. So Ben, why, uh, how much do you put in an aquarium? How do you know how much to do? Well, I mean, everything's gonna vary and everything comes down to what you're dosing, whether you're doing two part or what we refer to as our red soul solution, which is a vodka vinegar blend. Um, either way, you know, we, we strongly believe that peristaltic pumps are one of the most accurate ways. And the ones we're working with here today is the one from Bulk Reef Supply. It's just a single head dosing pump that you control with a wall timer. Um, for our systems, we're running about five mils of our vodka or red sole solution, that's a uh, nitrate reducing solution, uh, for every 100 gallons. So we're about to set this up on your 120. We're going to be doing it for five minutes, which will give us about 5.5 mils once a day. How do you arrive at 5.5 mils? I mean, that sounds like a magic number if you've never done this before. Yeah, no. Um, Every single minute that this pump runs, it's um, giving you 1.1 mils of effluent or, or your product. Uh, so we're running this for five minutes, which, you know, 1.1 times five is going to give you the 5.5 mils. And it's a 120 gallon aquarium mixed reef. It doesn't matter how much coral, really you're, look, you're, you're basing it on the volume of water in the system. Right, so the way that we look at vodka dosing is, is slightly different from how you would dose two part, which is what I would refer to as controlling your chemical parameters, which is your calcium, aquilinity, magnesium, uh, those things. This to me is actually nutrient control. So this vodka solution is going to basically increase bacterial colonization in your live rock. It's gonna give you better biological filtration, but it does work directly in conjunction with a high quality protein skimmer. I think this particular product is the number one reason to invest in a high quality protein skimmer because it can only do its job if you are removing all of this excess nutrients 
through that export process. Right now we're looking at the peristolic style pump that will uh, actually dose the vodka mix into the aquarium. And what you see right there is, if you can see it, there's a, uh, a rubber tube and the pump goes around and literally pulls whatever it is you're dosing out of the tube. And this is the most accurate way to do it. So basically, this is pretty simple. Uh, Ben's going to show us. But ben, go ahead and pick that up. You've got an in and you've got an out. The arrows show you which way to go. All right? Yes. And so, then what happens? We're going to mount that pump on the side of the stand, on the inside. Right. So like I said, this is your um, single head dosing pump from Bulk Reef Supply. They have a very easy wall attachment. So it's basically two screws. Pop this guy into the wall. It slides into a slot on the back of the dosing pump so you can have this easily mounted. And then of course we're gonna have our wall timer. It's just plugged into an outlet right now, which is gonna give us our five minutes a day. So now water, or not water rather, the fluid is gonna come into the peristaltic pump through this um, more rigid line tubing here, which will drop down into our container. I get these from usplastics.com. They're like three bucks a piece and they're amazing. They're sterile, they're graduated. So you can keep track of everything. Um, so we'll have one end of the hose drop down into your reservoir, and then it'll basically pull through and exit through your clear vinyl tubing here, which will go directly into the aquarium. Now we're gonna install the pump. Got a bracket mounted. It slides right on. Nice and neat. Leave room for all the others. All right, we're gonna drill a quarter inch hole. There we go. And we're starting to see some drips coming through. And there you go. So eventually we'll be dosing directly back into the sump and going into the system. So now you see how it works. I will tell you that anywhere you read online anymore, they will tell you that you need a good skimmer. And I did, in fact, just upgrade my skimmer. Uh, if you don't have a good skimmer, you won't be able to take advantage of the benefits of vodka dosing. Since I added the vodka doser to my aquarium about five weeks ago, I can tell you that my skimmer is working much more effectively and that the skimmate, the black or green scum that comes out of the skimmer, is stinkier than it ever was and that tells me that it's doing its job. Now you heard Ben say during the interview that we're going with five mils a day on my 120 reef. Probably the best thing to do is for you to start out at one or two mils a day and it's very easy because with this pump you use the electric timer you buy at the big box store so one minute is one mil, two minutes is two mils, etc, etc. Start out slow and build up because we've been doing it regularly with uh, our client aquariums. We basically know what our bio load is, give or take. Ben felt comfortable starting out right at the five mils and that's worked out fine for me. Uh, the only downside that I would say I have seen so far, there's been no negative impact on my corals, no negative impact on my fish uh, or any, anything else in the aquarium. Uh, I will say that I did get a pretty good case of cyanobacteria, also known as red slime, and I had to dose that with ChemiClean for two days, and that worked like a charm. So as of right now, while I'm sitting here, the red slime has gone away, and it appears to be gone, at least for now, uh, for good. There is a lot of conjecture on the internet and among reefers right now as to the value of this, the uh, vodka dosing, uh, some of the dangers involved, some of the potential downside, or really some of the downside if you don't do it properly. And there's a great article by Reef Keeping that I'll put a link to with the description of this video. I'll also put a link to the exact pump that we're using, and I'll try and find the link that Ben uses to buy those uh, graduated water bottles that have the marks on the side that tell you how many mils you're using every day. And if you read that reef keeping article, that'll get you into the chemistry lesson. If you're if you are into it that much and you understand the chemistry, I'm trying to stay away from it here today because I want you to enjoy this fincast. But if you really want to get down in the weeds on this thing, take a look at that reef keeping article and I feel certain it'll answer
answer all of your questions and a lot of the frequently asked questions out there, as well as fill in some of the gaps on how the vodka dosing actually works. So I hope you enjoyed part three as we continue to automate my aquarium. I'm not sure what I'll be adding next. Probably some sort of calcium and or alkalinity dosing. I'm contemplating maybe doing a one-part dosing. If not, maybe a two-part, which would be the calcium and the alkalinity. Still playing around with some of my different options and doing some research there. In the meantime, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.